Welcome to lesson four in module two. Let's talk about driving outcomes. What do you think of when I say driving outcomes? What's an outcome? What's the difference between an outcome and a result? What does it mean to drive outcomes as an orchestrator? We will be tackling those questions in this particular lesson and it will stretch your thinking. As an orchestrator, we have to activate change through collaboration. The way that usually happens <clears throat> is by driving specific activities around a project. What we wanna do is we wanna frame out the difference between pursuing activities and driving an outcome and collaborate on the outcome. So for example, an outcome is something measurable. So pursuing that outcome doesn't necessarily fit within a nice, neat calendar time frame, does it? And this is a this is a challenge for a lot of enablement people is the the date on the calendar becomes the result. But what if we're not driven by specific dates? What if we were driven by business outcomes? What would be the difference in how we would engage? Well, to figure that out, we have to understand what an outcome is in the first place. So let's dive in. If our goal and our vision is to drive commercial enablement outcomes, our success and even our survival as a role depends on the value we can deliver. I think every enablement person I've ever talked to wants to deliver value. To deliver that value, we have relationships that we have to nurture. We have to spend time with sales. We have to develop empathy for account teams, sales teams, the teams we're supporting and our company's customers. That means we have to then think about how we enable them, right? That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the vision. The vision is to enable. So how do we enable increased sales, right? If we're going to sell more and generate more revenue, how are we going to do that and support that outcome? And oh, by the way, do that by the 15th of next month. Can you really sign up for that? What about elevating our own roles? Let's say by the end of this specific course, you'll have all the skills you need. If that's the outcome, could I really tie it to a specific course? Can I really promise you that? Or would it require a different type of an approach? So in the first example, driving strategic impact in sales, can it really be pinned to a calendar date? And then when it comes to you, you personally, to have commercial enablement skills and become a, a VP of productivity down the road. Can I really tie it to this single course? Is that really the expectation that I wanna set? What about executing? Executing as a function and developing the right practices. How do I execute in commercial enablement to become a trusted advisor? Can I become a trusted advisor by just saying and declaring, I'm a trusted advisor, I'm done with that. Would everybody believe me just because I said it? I don't think so. These are examples of outcomes. They don't necessarily fit into a nice neat calendar. They don't necessarily fit into a course and they don't necessarily fit and pass the authenticity test by me declaring, you will treat me as a trusted advisor, I'm executing well. Doesn't fit that way, doesn't work that way. So what are outcomes? How would you answer that? What is an outcome? And more importantly, how would you define it not by an arbitrary calendar date or a course or deliverable or an output? How would you get more specific than saying, well, it's you know revenue? 
or it's what my boss says I should be driving to. How would you define it? If I were in an elevator with you and your CEO and your CEO asked, what outcomes are you going to drive this year? What would you answer? How would you answer that? Well, don't worry, we will, we're gonna work on this in this particular lesson. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give you a framework and help you do this. But before we do that, why do you think outcomes matter? Are outcomes worth pursuing? Do they even matter? Why not just set goals? Set a goal to launch a course. Set a goal to develop that manual. Set a goal to deploy the new sales process. Set a goal to create one pagers. Why not just set goals and let the outcomes take care of themselves? Why do outcomes matter? Now I'm hitting you with these questions and I might make you feel defensive or ill-equipped to answer these, but remember the quest you're on. We're on a quest and that quest means creating this, this gap and being comfortable to dwell in it. I used to hate this, couldn't stand it, but what is the alternative? To, to asking the tough questions. And are these questions unfair? Is it unfair or um, unexpected to ask what an outcome is? I don't think so, right? So why not, why not try to figure it out? If you do have an answer and you wrote it down, great. Let's compare how we look at it and let's compare our perspectives. Remember, the quest that we're tackling here in this course is becoming heroic to your CEO and your executive team. A hero is an ordinary person doing extraordinary things. That sounds an awful lot like outcomes. Outcomes can be are extraordinary things that require a lot of enablement because you cannot do it yourself. And that's the thing about outcomes. If you defined it by what you will do, and what your team will do, you're probably not driving an outcome. What I find over and over again is that outcomes in the commercial system are always bigger than one person or one team because we're driving customer experience, we're driving business strategy, we're moving forward across the customer's organization, and we're typically as a company driving some sort of transformation. Is it really authentic to say that one person or one team has all the answers to that? So if you define an outcome as something you do personally or something that you do with your direct reports, you're probably not driving an outcome. This creates a challenge and that's why you've got to learn to wear the hero suit and orchestrate to drive outcomes across the organization. So one of the things that Scott Santucci put together over 10 years ago is the definition of an outcome. And he defined it with executives, CEOs. And that's the other piece of this is who gets to define what an outcome is? Well, why not start with the executives that are funding your role and funding the sales team and the executives who are making commitments to investors to drive growth. So that's what he did. And he had meetings face to face and he ran sessions and they came up with this definition of an outcome. An outcome is an achieved end state that has a clear executive owner and is framed out as a high level initiative to achieve a measurable result by aligning and bringing together all the impacted stakeholders over a life cycle. It's a journey. The thing about an outcome is it's very rarely just done. If you think about the outcomes to drive strategic imperatives, they're usually never complete. They're never fully done. All you can do is 
take the journey, achieve a specific end state, a phase, a threshold, align everybody, frame out the right initiatives to drive the right type of action, achieve measurable results with a lot of people, which is why orchestration is important, and then do it over a journey and then do it again and do it again and elevate and evolve. Anything else that is a checking the box off of a calendar, checking the box off of a course, did it get done? Those are not outcomes to me. They are results or goals. But we're talking about outcomes, business outcomes that align to the executive view, which is what Scott put together. So let's talk about each. What does an achieved end state mean? I mean, it, there's a lot to figure out. Uh, especially at your company. If you flip it and say what our company is responsible for helping our clients achieve an end state, what is that end state? What is that vision? What does it look like? Can you even put words to it and not talk about your product and not talk about your solution? What's in it for your clients? What's their world look like after working with you? That requires some pen to paper. That requires talking to a lot of people and factoring in their perspectives and figuring out who outcomes matter to. This one's always interesting. When you think about it, who wants the outcome? Is it you? Is it your executive team? Or is it your customers and clients? If you think about it from a outside in perspective, it's clients and customers what do they want so shouldn't outcomes matter to them what does it mean to help your clients be successful and then what's your role in it and yes it's bigger than you yes you cannot do it alone yes it's true there are multiple people involved yes you don't have control absolutely no control all you can do is enable now what well, let's figure out who the executive owner is of that end state vision. There's probably an executive and they have patterns and points of view and perspective around tackling that achieved end state. So who is the person that's most responsible for making that end state vision happen? When it comes to enablement, who is the person that has the achieved end state of what sales success looks like. How are you aligning your outcomes to that person and how are you exploring those outcomes? What does it look like? This person is a real person. They have a real point of view. They have a perspective. How are you exploring that? Is it the marketing leader? Is it the sales leader? Is it sales leadership, multiple people? Is it the CEO? Who's the executive owner? of the outcomes that you're driving? And how does that relate to your customers? When you think about that, remember, executives are people too. You have to have empathy for them as, as leaders in the business. They're on the hook for a lot and they're accountable for results. Uh, they, they have a lot of commitments and accountability and growth is one of them. So how do, you, how do your outcomes that you drive and you align support their growth initiative and what their outcomes are? How do you map? How do you align? Remember, executives are people. They're people. They have a job to do. How are you helping them? This is a, a great question because for executives to be successful, they have to drive the right impact. And the more empathy you have for what they're trying to achieve, the better. So some ideas here are, can you role play situations that, that they may ask you about? They ask a lot of why questions. Why do we wanna do this? What's the impact? Do they understand, do you understand what outcomes they're trying to drive? Where would you get that information? Where would you get the information about what the executive team cares about? Can you translate their vision and their outcomes into a set of requirements? 
requirements that you can align to and factor in as you engage and, and frame out your initiatives. Are you committed to achieving the end state, even though it's a journey over time and it might not ever really fully be realized? Can you take the end state journey and break it into thresholds and pursue those and be willing to orchestrate the many moving parts required to achieve that end state? Are you factoring in other people's perspectives? Or are you just declaring what the answer is? Are you bringing together the perspectives of marketing and product and sales operations and others that are, are, have, a, have a say or skills or resources that can help you achieve the outcome? And are you embracing the fact that they probably all don't see the same thing? And that's okay, because you can orchestrate that. And then take some accountability. One of the things that uh, I personally see in the enablement space is a lot of leaders taking accountability for driving the sales results. And executives love that. They, they, they need the help. And sales leadership is accountable for the number. They get fired if they don't hit it. What accountability do you have? What are you signing up for? And when you think about that, that requires discipline. You need discipline in order to drive the right outcome. You need discipline in order to filter the inputs you're receiving. You need discipline to figure out the trade-offs you need to make as you pursue the outcome. So by going through this particular lesson and thinking through the outcome that you're trying to drive, you'll be able to put these things into place. So how do you achieve that outcome? How do you know you're making progress? What does it look like in the day-to-day? -day? Well, going back to this outcome wheel, you can frame it out as a high-level initiative. Now that's easier said than done. Framing out an initiative from scratch requires a lot of pen to paper, and it requires a lot of relationship management internally. Creating a new initiative and getting people on board and securing the resources and the time and the remit to tackle that initiative uh, requires some uh, empathy and it requires some executive presence. Uh, developing a high level initiative means thinking through how your executives that you're working with are going to realize the benefits they're trying to attain. If it's about increasing market share, how will you help drive and, and realize the benefit of achieving market share? What can you do to prove you're in helping sales increase market share? And then how do you link what you're doing and the initiatives that you're driving to that outcome? Got to do that work to make sure you're not over committing and under delivering. So how do you know, how do you know when you've achieved an outcome? What if, especially if, if you're not ever really done? I mean, that's a tough one. Everybody wants the outcome to be achieved. But are you ever going to capture enough market share? Are you ever going to be able to onboard salespeople fast enough? Are you ever going to get pipeline to be big enough? Are you ever going to get deal sizes big enough? Right? That's the nature of growth. So if you're constantly expecting to measure results based on it being done, it's going to be hard to pursue an outcome. So when you think about outcomes and you think about measuring results, what are some thresholds or some steps along the way that show you're making progress? In many ways, achieving results and measurable results means making progress and defining the progress you're making. So are you making progress along the way? How do people know? How do people understand the progress? How do you help them see the progress? What are the measures along the way, whether they're leading indicators, lagging indicators, doesn't matter what you put together, as long as people agree with you're making progress on that outcome.
for example, if you're going to take a hard numbers approach, then you've got to build some visibility and, and actually get your hands on the data. A lot, of, a lot of times we struggle to get the right data and the data isn't clean. There's also more of a scorecard approach you can take. You know, for example, you can talk about in terms of moving things, helping, help, helping sales move faster, helping sales have better conversations. You can talk in terms of removing costs out and improving profitability. Those are indicators that you are making progress on your outcome. You can talk about how you translate the business strategy into the sales strategy, and then how you translate the st sales strategy into an enablement strategy. You can talk about how you're, you, you're and, and you could frame out initiatives that help you orchestrate. And then you could activate initiatives, programs, and projects that prove you're on that path towards that outcome. We'll talk a lot about that in other modules. The concept here is what's important. The concept is we're framing out an outcome that really will never fully be realized. But what we can realize is progress along the way. And the way we can attain that progress on the way is through a blended approach of hard data and the work we're doing. We can prove the work we're doing, such as standing up initiatives, launching initiatives, getting feedback from sales leadership, et cetera, that, that show we're making progress towards that outcome. And we can give people a lot of confidence that we know what we're doing, especially if we're doing it with others. So who's impacted by an outcome? Who's impacted by the outcomes you're driving? I think it's easy to say, well, you know, sales. <laughs> but we got to get more specific than that, especially if you want to drive adoption, especially if you want to have cross-functional teaming, especially if you want credit for what you've done. If you're not understanding who the impacted stakeholders are, how will you align to the outcome, and how, especially since the outcome is bigger than you? This is why you're going to have to understand the people involved and spend a lot more time connecting the dots with them and building those relationships. One of the things that's critical that I've found is in these types of pursuits and initiatives and, and actually a portfolio of initiatives that we can put together to drive an outcome, each leader typically has something they want from the initiatives you're involved in. So said another way, how do you help leaders get what they want so that you get what you want? Right? How do you help all leaders get what they want so that you can get what you want? It's a give and get. And so helping uh, connect the dots across the stakeholders also gives you the ability to get your hands on resources and brain power. They don't have to report into you, but how do you get access to people that have skills you need? Well, the way to do that is to be clear on what expectations stakeholders have and what expectations you're setting. You have to also factor in that there might need to be some alternatives that you're driving to. Like for example, if you can't get your hands on resources from people internally, you may need to explore externally. Everybody might be strapped internally and this is knowledge work. A lot of this is you need to maybe outsource some of that. That's an alternative. Also be prepared that there'll, there'll be a lot of things lost in translation and there will be a lot of people who are impatient and there will be a lot of people who want to put their perspective on the front end. And a lot of commercial enablement success is, is built on your ability to engage in those conversations. And it takes an investment by you. So that, that's important. The key here is, I found, is to try to frame it as in a new way and then talk about what it takes to get there. So if you're able to frame out an end state vision that is new and then enroll people into that, 
what you'll start hearing is, well, hey, can we really do that? Or do we have the executive support for that? Or what role do you want me to play? That type of curiosity is something that you can deal with. That's something you can ha tap into. Right, remember the quest, we're trying to do something heroic, right? This is part of that. Um, it's a lot to figure out, it's ambiguous, but it can be clear. You just have to get your thinking clean and you have to be clear on how it drives strategy. This is part of the value add of being an orchestrator, right? If you think about it, um, execution isn't something you can just wave your magic wand, right? You know that, and especially in a, digital world where everybody's pressed for time, this is the techniques and the approach that you're going to have to develop to enroll people. Because like I've been alluding to, when is the outcome actually going to be done? How would you answer that now? When will the outcome be achieved? Will it ever be done, right? The answer to that is probably no. So you're gonna to have to think about over a life cycle. That life cycle will be in terms of sprints or funding or initiatives with a, with a start and a stop. One way to think about it is if you're driving specific initiatives to a specific end state, uh, how many times can you elevate and shift the end state to achieve the outcome? And again, prove the progress along the way, because that's what really people really want, the progress along the way. That's what your peers will want. That's what your team will want. Executives want the outcome. And they need to have confidence that you're helping drive to that. So when you put all this together, your customers, your, your company's customers and your executives actually want the same things. They want to know what the world is gonna look like after working with you. So what's the world gonna look like after working with you in, as a commercial enablement leader? And by the way, what's the world gonna look like after your salespeople sell and engage your customers? It's the same challenge. The challenge that you have right now is the same challenge your sales teams are gonna have. They're going to have to explain the outcome your company achieved. So you might as well wrestle with it in your own function. That's going to give you a lot more empathy. Who is the most likely person responsible for making the end state vision happen? And are you building relationships with that person? Hopefully you're doing that. You must be doing that. You have to elevate to that level or you're going to not be driving outcomes. And there's, you know, value in doing goals and tasks. The, the, key, the key here is on this particular lesson and in this module, we're talking about orchestrating. And we're talking about elevating the role to a commercial enablement leader. So how do you take responsibility for making that interstate vision happen? By the way, your salespeople that you support, they will have to do that as well if you are selling an outcome to your clients. So you might as well explore that and wrestle with that because it's the same challenge a sales team's gonna have. High level initiative, clients fund initiatives. Your internal leaders also fund initiatives. Remember, they want the results. They will find the funding if you can make the result clear enough and you can explain how that's a stepping stone to the broader outcome. What similar examples of success can you share? What does the measurement of success look like? Does it include pipeline? Does it include deal sizes? What is it and how does it roll up? How do those measures roll up to the outcome? Who are all the people involved? Lean into Lean into the fact that this is broader and bigger than you. Embrace it. Embrace it. Don't control it. Big, big lesson learned for me. You cannot control the entire ecosystem. You, can, you have to enable it. And that, that is the key to orchestrating. That's the key to your success. Nobody else will be focused that way. So it won't be easy, but you can do it with tools like this. And then over a life cycle, how do you show the benefit that you're realizing over time? How, how are those benefits being realized as a stepping stone to the broader outcome? How do you scope it in a way that you can achieve in six months or four months or 30 days? And then declare victory and prove that you're making progress. The more you can set the milestones, 
the, and, and the more clear it is with regard to achieving the end state, the, the more momentum you can gain and the more confidence you will get from others because you're able to prove it along the way. So that those are the attributes of an outcome. It's easier said than done, I understand that. So let's start rolling up our sleeves and grab our participant guide and start working on this. This is uh, an exercise that, that you can engage in where you clarify your outcomes as in commercial enablement. What outcome? Just pick one. What is it? What is the achieved end state? And then how are you gonna break it down over a life cycle? Do the work. You may have to get outside the participant guide. You may need to whiteboard. You may need to draw some pictures. You may need to ask some questions, but think about it in terms of the layering and the moving parts required so that you can go into that eyes wide open. What you do not wanna do is what a lot of enablement leaders do who are not commercial enablement leaders, they make promises that they'll be able to do it and then they never engage that way. Do not do that because you will undermine your credibility. So if you're going to drive outcomes, if you're going to, to achieve an end state vision, be clear on what it is and, and tackle that eyes wide open. Don't say you're going to impact sales results and then go about random acts. That's not commercial enablement. It's not orchestration. Okay. So what are the big takeaways? Most people say they want outcomes, but very few people have done the work to clarify what that means. Don't be one of those people. Do the work. Everyone will have their own perspective. You have to lean into that. You're going to need to develop techniques to create room for everybody to participate and see themselves in the outcome. That's easier said than done. But the, the more you can do that, the more you fold them in, the, the bigger your chances of success. The more you dive into outcomes, the more you realize what you don't know. And that's okay. Remember, it's not about control. It's not about having the right answer. It's about ha having the best answer. You don't have to be the one with the answer. So take the time to do things right and focus on what matters most. You cannot rush this kind of work. This is long-term arch type of stuff. Doesn't mean that's the only thing you're doing. If you have to feed the beast <laughs> on a daily basis, do that, but be clear on what outcomes you're signing up for and realize that that's a long-term journey. And that journey may actually never be done. So you're gonna to have to be smart about what you sign up for on a quarterly, monthly, yearly, yearly basis and orchestrate to achieve that. Everybody will accept that you can do it faster and love the fact if you do it faster. What they won't accept is you saying you're driving outcomes and you don't do this kind of work to figure out how to make it happen. All right, so take the time, fill out your workbook and I'll see you on the next lesson.